Hi folks, just another uh, video uh, showing you how I have uh, changed the upper rear suspension arm on my BMW E60 530D, it's the E60 shape and the arm is this one here So uh, it goes, that's it there, with the uh, various lines attached to it. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's attached in there, by what I think maybe 18 mil fittings, but I'll come back to you on that. And then it's also attached here. The reason why I'm changing it is because this ball joint here is perished. So, in order to get through the MOT, I have to change this arm. So it doesn't look like it should present too much of a challenge. It's only attached to two places, but make this video. Hopefully, it'll help somebody else save them pain. Somebody did it. So, I'll find out what size they are and then come back to you. One of note before I actually carry on, what I'll show you is uh, just lifted the car up with a control arm there essentially with a jack. That's just a hockey puck there. In between the two to stop any scratching or damage. And then set it down on a axle stand here again with a hockey puck in between the metal and the jack point. So just to make it nice and secure, this here jack isn't holding anything now, the whole weight of the car is on that. This is just hovering slightly below the arm. So uh, first thing I've done is I have sprayed, I was hoping to do this on a dry day but can't control the weather. I sprayed a lot of WD-40 in around there to try and help clean it off and I'm going to hit it with a wire brush. I think it's, I always find it's important to clean those nuts, clean everything a lot before you start doing anything with spanners uh, to avoid things slipping and stripping and damaging uh, the nuts and then you end up having to cut things off so I'll clean that all up and then come back. So to give you an update. Uh, obviously that is the arm there that I'm just tapping with the light so it's attached in there with two 18 millimeters a nut there and a bolt on that side so it's a bit awkward to get out on it was pretty tight I cleaned it an awful lot with wire brushes and WD-40 and I'm using an 18 mil spanner and an 18 mil socket to hold that one straight and just do wee turns at a time it took quite a bit of force to get it loose, but not a ridiculous amount. So I'll loosen that, and then the nut will actually pull out to the right. Apologies, because I'm on my own, I can't really demonstrate how I'm doing these things. I can just show you snapshots. Um, once I take the nut off on this side, then the bolt, as far as I know, will slide out from that side to the right there and that should free up this part of the arm then I will move on to this, I've cleaned this down too that bit sticking out there, that nipple looking thing sticking out is a 10 millimeter hex and the big one is a 21 so I'm going to use a 21 millimeter spanner and hold the 10 millimeter hex with something similar to have on the right here and crack that loose and then pretty much all I need to do is take away these lines and stuff, that's, either, that's obviously been changed before and cable tied on. I'll just snip those, pull it all away, pull the arm out, put a new one in. So I'll get these loose and uh, come back to you, show you sort of how it works out. Quick update because I've managed to get a few things loose here. So in the inner, in the inside there, uh, basically just what I said before, small turns, as you can see, there's a bit of a gap there now. I've managed to get that one loose. And it was just left this side. So on this side, I've got the 10 mil socket, 
over the end of that and I had to go and buy a 21 mil spanner. Uh, circular filling there at the bottom and basically I pulled the spanner towards me to loosen that nut. Uh, I was finding it hard to hold that in place so I actually put a bar on it and tucked it up in there behind the bottom of the spring. Right or wrong but it held it in place and then it came loose so that's everything loose. So basically now it's just a case of undoing that nut all the way till it's off. Undoing that nut all the way to pull that bolt out. Unclipping those and the arm should just come straight out. So I'll come back to you here shortly. The arm is going to go in under here. Up in and in there but I'll clean it all out properly before I do that. Tighten it all up. As they'll reuse uh, this and this, they didn't come with a new part, but that old nut that came off the ball joint, uh, well, I'll keep it for God knows, make it handy for something someday, but I'll not reuse it here because uh, a new one came with the new part. So I'll start putting that in and then come back to you. Okay, folks, just uh, an update on how I get on with this little project. So, as you can see, the new arm went in. Underneath those, lifted it up on top of it, and in there, I'm reusing the old nuts and bolt. And then on this side, there's a new one came with it. I actually had to bend that ball joint, it's a bit stiff, a wee bit to get it in, but it's not too hard. It'll go in. I've cable tied the various lines back against it, not pinching anything. One of them is a bit loose as a brake wear sensor. It's long since kaput. Didn't bother with that. I just tucked it out of the way. It's already kaput anyway. So I'm not too worried about that though. I changed the pads myself. So I know they don't need changed at the minute. The car's getting on a wee bit. So I don't worry about minor details like that. So what I'm going to do is tighten that up a bit first. And then I'm going to use the jack here to actually lift this hub up towards right height and once it's at right height then I'll tighten this down and then I can let it back down again and then I'll tighten this one down so that's basically how to do it it only took me a couple of hours and that's with having to go out and buy a spanner and various T-brakes and mucking about it's very doable uh, as always I don't take any responsibility for anyone causing damage to the car while doing this. This is just an illustration of how I have done it on my car. And hopefully somebody will save themselves a few quid. You don't have to pay a mechanic to do this. That arm only cost me about 35 quid. It's not even a good make, I don't think, but it'll do for the next while. So the whole repair was around 35 pound plus the price of a spanner. Not too bad. As always, thanks for watching.